So we're trying an experiment this morning. We're here at One Southern Indiana, and this is part of the One SI Cares initiative. And we're just gonna see how it goes. They've asked me to be the guinea pig, which happens more than you'd think. Um, so today we're gonna talk about uh, sales and marketing in this new landscape with coronavirus. And, and every day at 10 o'clock, uh, One SI is gonna host a new expert on Facebook as a Facebook live cast. Um, to share some expertise in their area. So if there's an area you'd really like to hear about or hear from, uh, you need to let your friends at 1SI know. So I'm just gonna roll through some things very quickly here that I think are important to keep in mind uh, as you're looking at sales and marketing in a time when it's just unprecedented and really weird. Um, so the first thing I would say is stop sending emails with COVID-19 or coronavirus in the headline in the subject line. Um, if you pay attention on social media at all, you're seeing that people are really, really, really tiring of those to the extent that they're not even opening them anymore. So if you have something important to say about your business and how it relates to what's happening now, think of a different subject line. Uh, there's got to be a better way to put it. If you have the important information you do have to post, uh, put that on your website, put it on social media if you want to but probably don't bury people with another COVID-19 email. I'm not sure that they need that. Um, second thing, and maybe this should have been the first thing, is, is make everything about your customer right now. Um, they are less interested in how things are going at your company and what you're experiencing than they are about their own experience and how it's changing and evolving every day. So what I would say to you is reach out to them, find out how they feel, what do they need, um, find out how you can help and then really your communication should be limited I think to two things one is um, what do you need right now so ask those good questions and how can we help and, and really try and stay focused on that uh, if you do help somebody uh, demonstrate how that works so that you can help some more people and so more people know that you can help them um, third thing I think think about what you do and think about what people need right now and figure out how those things fit together because the truth is what you do right now, the way that you've always done it may not fit with the way people, what people need, but it may very well be that you can modify that in some way to meet a need that's out there right now. So think about all your people, your skills, your resources. What need can you meet right now? Uh, maybe it makes you money, maybe it doesn't, but what pain can you relieve? Uh, how can you just throw something positive out there into the world? That's, that's really fantastic PR. Uh, next thing is do not stop marketing and selling and there are, there are people that think we need, really need to just pull it all back in right now and I think the opposite of that is true uh, there's probably never been a more important time to make sure that people hear your message you're not taking advantage of a situation if, if you can help people or you can help companies you need to let them know that that's really important and if it's something where you're going to be able to help them down the road you need to let them know that too but whatever you do, don't stop marketing and selling. There's lots and lots of tools that we can use to stay in front of, of prospects and customers, and we need to be doing that. Um, it, it, the, I think a really good example of this is Harley Davidson. Their philosophy has always been to spend into a recession. This isn't a recession. I don't want to suggest it is, but the idea is nobody's going to buy a Harley during a recession, but everybody's going to think about it if, if they're Harley people that's really top of mind for them. Harley wants to keep it there so that when the recession is over and they're back to work and maybe getting overtime, first purchase is a Harley. So you wanna to be top of mind when this is all over and it will be over. Um, think about how you can personalize this whole service at a distance model. Uh, the restaurants, I think, uh, have had to punt a little bit, but any, any bank, any restaurant, anybody who's now having to only deliver what they do remotely, Think about how you can humanize that. Uh, is that can you put a, a note in, in the package or in the tube that goes out to the customer that just says, hang in there? I mean, even just have one printed up, right? That says, <laughs> we were joking around earlier, that says stay negative, right? Um, but, but our default is sort of email and Slack and those kinds of things, but think about the tools we have that personalize it more. So video, right, Zoom. Uh, anything that you can do that's going to put a personal face on all this is a good thing. 
be a matchmaker. If you have, if you're in the, in the business to business world and you have one client that is worried about laying people off and you have another client that needs people, connect those two clients together. See if you can be the person that helps them meet one another's needs. Um, think about all the resources that you have available to you through your network and how you might put those together. You might even refer somebody to a competitor. That's never gonna hurt you, believe me. If you're helping people right now, they're not gonna forget you. Um, stay on social media. There are, because of people being, you know, doing the whole sheltered home thing and working from home and all that, people are spending much more time on social media right now than they usually do. So this is a great time for you, not just to post information about what you're doing, but really to ask them questions, to like what they're doing and comment on what they're doing and share. Follow people you normally don't follow. Uh, there, there are lots of good things you can do on social media right now, and this is a fantastic time to do it. So uh, make sure that, that you, you take advantage of that, but interact. Don't, it's, it's not advertising, so don't just post things that are for your benefit. Post things that are for their benefit, ask questions, and listen to answers. Um, keep in mind that some companies are doing well right now. That's another thing that's a little different about this versus a typical recession. There, I mean, grocery stores, gas stations between low gas prices and being the one place where you can still find milk, uh, they're very busy right now. Uh, there, so there are lots and lots of companies that are thriving and doing well right now. So if you work with companies, how can you work with those companies? Um, if you do some of that matchmaking we mentioned earlier, how can you help direct people to those companies? So, so think about the companies that are doing well instead of just the companies that are struggling. Um, Share the wealth. Bet between you and all the people on your team, you guys have a lot of skills and knowledge and experience and expertise. This is a perfect time to share that. Uh, think about how you might do it. It might be a webinar, it might be social media posts, it might be emails, but uh, it's a great opportunity to get a lot of good information out there that people can use in a way that they can use it. And it doesn't hurt that it reminds them that you are experts at what you do, that you're, you're kind of thought leaders. So make an impression right now while everybody's looking. Um, think about changing your delivery model. If, if uh, we're being handed a note. Ask the question. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, if you have questions, I should have said this at the very beginning. If you have questions relating to marketing and sales right now, uh, throw them up on Facebook right now. We'll get them and we'll ask, how about that? Um, so, so think about your delivery model. Restaurants are already doing this, right? They went from being a dine-in situation to um, curbside and carry-out service. And uh, how can you promote that? The, I will say the exchange is doing a good job right now of not just promoting that, but also like they're sharing recipes and that kind of thing. So, so be smart and think about, is there a way to deliver what we do differently than we normally deliver it? And is there a way to speed that up? Because right now it's so weird. There's this side-by-side -side sense of everything's at a standstill and a sense of urgency. So think about how you can deliver your product or your service in a different way and think about how you can make that faster and easier to do. Uh, look for new ways for uh, the folks who do business with you to communicate with you. Uh, and then last uh, but not least, this is the last of my remarks, and that is think about joining forces. You have suppliers, you have vendors, you have business associates, people in your network. Uh, you don't have to do this by yourself. They're facing a lot of the same things. How can you all get together and offer something together that one of you separately can't? How can you help each other? How can you feed business back and forth to each other? But, but think about how you can support other businesses. Um, at the end of the day, the people who come out of this the best are gonna be the people who focus on helping somebody. Uh, and, and ideally your business is in the business of helping people, but if you, if you think about that, you focus on that, you build your marketing and sales around that, I think you're gonna do great. Uh, and so with that, I'm gonna find out if the crew here has any questions. We do, we have two questions. First question is, is it in poor taste to advertise luxury items or services at this time? 
So the question is, if you didn't hear that, is it in poor taste to advertise high-end or luxury products or services right now? And I think the answer is absolutely not. Uh, there are, if you think about the situation, there are plenty of people, uh, you may or may not be among them, but there are plenty of people who have lots of resources. They just, they can't go anywhere right now. They can't, this isn't the time where they can travel, they can go do something recreationally or whatever. So um, this is absolutely the time to let people know that you have something that you can offer them that's gonna help them through this time. I think uh, Best Buy sent out an email this morning and I thought it was really smart of them to say, hey, if you're in a situation where you're gonna be home, we've got all the electronics to keep you connected, to keep you entertained, right? All that kind of thing. So it's just a smart use of, of that time. All right, next question. How do we know what our consumers and audiences want at this time? And how do we resist flooding them with so much information? So I, I think those are two parts of the same thing. Uh, I, I think that you, you need to ask. And social media gives you this fascinating uh, sort of open invitation into people's homes and into their lives and into their brains. And so just say, how can, I, I think that the best question you can ask right now is how can we help? What do you need? What's on your mind? People are going to respond if you ask those questions, and you should be on all social media right now, all the, certainly all the social media where your customers live. So if that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, find, find the sweet spot for your folks, but worry a lot less about pushing information out and a lot more about pulling information in. They'll tell you what they need. And if think about this, if you're the person or the company that asks that question and then when those answers come in, it's not something you can do, but you can say, you need to get in touch with so-and-so. They're on Facebook right now or they're on LinkedIn or here's their phone number, here's their web address. If you start to put people together, you're just gonna be seen as a great community resource and that's wonderful PR. And, and this is a great time for good PR. Um, rise to the occasion. Excellent. What is your recommendation for higher education as this is usually the prime recruiting season for fall? There's so much uncertainty. Um, should they wait until things calm down as we are afraid we won't be able to cut through the noise right now and avoid throwing away those dollars? So what are your thoughts for higher education and recruiting? So we know that in, in the higher ed world, if the economy slows, enrollment rises. And while I don't think we're entering a recession, I don't think this is going to throw us into a recession, uh, I do think there will be a slowdown as a result of this for a while. So uh, when you think about the way that, that students and potential students' minds work, especially what we used to call non-traditional students, those older students, um, I think there's going to be more of a market for higher education in the next year or two. So I think this is exactly the time to talk about it, but I think don't be tone deaf in the way that you talk about it. So uh, talk about it first of all by asking and starting conversations um, and then suggesting that maybe this is the time, if you find yourself particularly in a field that was hit hard by this, maybe this is an opportunity to gain some expertise through a degree that will insulate you a little bit the next time around, that will position you a little better the next time around, whether it's this or a recession. I mean, we hope this is a one-time thing and we're never gonna see it again. Um, so, so I think this is an excellent time to do it if you do it in a sort of a calm and steady and steadfast way that interacts with people instead of just pushing information out there. How should companies be messaging to their employer, employees internally? Boy, that's a huge question, and that's, that's such a big part of marketing because your employees are, are your brand, whether you like it or not. So you may say, uh, we're, we deliver great service. Our brand is great, all built around great service. If your employees don't believe that, that's not your brand at all. So uh, the, the one thing I can say with absolute certainty is over-communicate. The second a thought comes into your brain and it feels solid and actionable, you should share that. You should say, here's what we're thinking about. This is our thought process. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want to just say, all of a sudden out of the clear blue sky, hey, we're gonna lay all you guys off. You want them to understand that you're looking at every situation and every solution 
and every possibility. Um, and you want to remind them of why you're there. So you, you may have the opposite problem. You may not be thinking about laying people off. You may need more people. So the folks you have are stressed right now because they're overworked. Um, so they need to be reminded, not just of the sort of nuts and bolts part of their job, but the, of the good that they're doing. I assure you right now, anybody who is in any business anywhere working with customers is helping those people, whether it's cashiers, whatever it might be, they're, they're doing a great job. And they need to hear from you that they're doing a great job and be reminded of those things that, that matter. So some of the things we talked about, right? Remind your folks, personalize this experience, be a good listener, right? Everybody that comes in, just say, how are you doing, right? Nobody should go through a drive through window at a bank without that person that's helping them saying, how are you, are you guys doing okay? Are you hanging in there? Uh, that's really important. But, but above all, with your employees, communicate, communicate, communicate. Let them know what's on your mind and let them know the process. I can't emphasize that enough. I think it's really important that they understand you're not getting to a decision like that. You're, you're getting to a decision after a thoughtful process and probably some, some agony if you've got to lay people off. Um, there's nothing harder. There's just nothing harder. So. Alan, you have mentioned social media quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on those different types of social media? Sure. Is there one that's better than another? So give us some, some insight and feedback on okay. those social medias. It's, so uh, there's not a one size fits all. So if your clients are primarily other businesses, LinkedIn is the only place you need to be. You can be other places. You can be on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You can do that. But the truth is you're following and uh, the energy is gonna be on LinkedIn for you. Uh, and I think this is a great time, you know, with LinkedIn you can do posts and you can do articles. And so if you have a lot of information, put that in an article and then share that with people that you know and ask them to share it as well. So I think LinkedIn is, is a, a real focus for you. I think for uh, consumer businesses, Facebook and Instagram, and some of that depends on the age of your customers. So uh, is, while, while everybody is using both, Facebook is going to skew older, Instagram is going to skew younger. Um, I would say keep in mind in all cases that um, these are visual media as well. So take advantage of the opportunities you have for things like this with Facebook Live, for video, for photos, and, and if you're going to use photos and that kind of thing, throw something up there people haven't already seen a million times. Don't, don't use the same stock photo of 10 ethnically diverse people doing a high five in an office, right? We've just seen it a million times. So, uh, you know, Twitter, I, th I think it's important to be on Twitter, um, but really Twitter is just becoming more of a social conversation now than a business thing. So. Uh, I would not make it the linchpin or the thing that I'm relying on for social media. Uh, you know, Snapchat, we're, it's early days in terms of businesses using Snapchat, so I don't, I don't think that we know enough about that yet to, to be able to give you good guidance. We'll wait and see. A lot of us uh, have a lot of downtime, as you know. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, insights as the best way to utilize our downtime, any good marketing reads or suggestions that we can be doing in our spare time right now? Uh, Dr. Oz says, <laughs> just kidding. Look up what Dr. Oz says you ought to be doing right now. That's fun, a fun read. Um, there are, uh, my gosh, there are so many great books out there. And, and uh, let me quickly say, if you're not somebody that likes to sit down with a physical book, audio books are awesome. Um, obviously books on your, whatever your device of choice is. Um, but I've been listening to a bunch lately. Uh, I've been making a lot of road trips. There's a, a new book out. But, so Building a Story Brand is a terrific book by Donald Miller, and it's all about how to clarify your message. If you're in business, you owe it to yourself to read that book. Uh, he has a new book out that he wrote with J.J. Peterson. I have not read this book yet, so I can't vouch for it, but I doubt that it's not, I doubt that it's bad, called Marketing Made Simple. I would look at that. Um, there's a, a fantastic book, if you're a very small business, called a Company of One. I wanna say that's by a guy named Paul Jarvis, and it's really about uh, 
resisting that urge to just grow for growth's sake and figuring out instead how to prosper as a small business and all the ways to do that and, and tons and tons and tons of best practices in that book. Um, Atomic Habits is another book that is terrific and I don't even know if I could say it's so much, uh, it certainly is a business book but it applies to everything and it's really about two things, breaking habits that you don't want, bad habits that you already have, and how to start a good habit. And uh, it's really smart the way that he breaks those things down. Um, anything by Seth Godin is awesome. Anything by Malcolm Gladwell is awesome. Uh, those guys, they're, they're home runs right out of the gate every time. Um, Malcolm Gladwell's new one is really different. I think it's called Talking to Strangers. And uh, the tone of it is very different. It's more a social book than anything he's written before. Um, David and Goliath is the one of his that I probably enjoyed the most. Um, those are just the ones off the top of my head. You know, I, I'm a big fan of books that are both full of good information and a pleasant read. You know, there are books out there that I think are, are really good books, but they're a little dense or you have to struggle through them a little bit. So that's what I would do. Uh, so. If you have any more questions, uh, the last thing you want is for me to have to juggle, which I'm willing to do. Um, we have hand sanitizer, my phone, and a bottle of water. If you want to see that, let me know, and we'll do that right now. Otherwise, please, uh, for the benefit of One Southern Indiana and everybody else, <laughs> throw a question out there. Um, I should mention also that the re remarks that I made early on uh, – we have a PDF of that information, and that will be available today's Friday. So that'll be available, I don't know if it'll be available at the end of day today, but certainly before the weekend is over, that will be available on the OneSI website. So OneSI.org, you'll be able to get a PDF of the information that I talked about earlier. Um, and that also has my email address on it, so if you have other questions or thoughts, you can throw them out there. Um, and. You can always uh, post a question after we're done here today. So uh, I'll be happy to, to field those and answer those. I'm on Facebook as well and LinkedIn. So uh, connect with one another. I think that's a, an important thing to think about. This is an awesome time to, to reach out to other people and connect with other people, whether it's Facebook or whether it's LinkedIn, um, so that you've got other resources besides your own. So I hope that's helpful. We do have another question. How can businesses during this time find their primary competitive advantage? Throwing a tough one your way. No, I, I think that's it. The, the interesting thing about that is that's not a coronavirus question. That's an anytime, all the time question is how do you find your advantage? Um, and so I think there are a couple of things that are true. One is uh, look, take a good, hard, harsh look at your own company and all of your competition and figure out what it is that you do better than anybody else, differently and better. That's the first step. If you go through that exercise and you say, wow, we're doing everything exactly the way everybody else does at the same level as everybody else, there's really not a discernible difference. You have a couple of choices. The first one, which is the one I would recommend, is figure out a way to do that better. So what's a new thing you can offer or a new way to offer it? Uh, I mean, and, and you're seeing some of this now. Innovation, a, a crisis is great for innovation. So all of a sudden, companies that never even thought about delivery are delivering. Uh, so they're coming up with ways to do that. I think the, the ones that do that well are going to ride out of the coronavirus pandemic and into some more business because now they've got a model they know works. And they can say, in addition to the other ways you're used to getting our product or our service, guess what? Here's a, a new way. Um, the other piece of that, though, I think is if you're in a business where what you're doing isn't discernibly different from everybody else's, um, your marketing should be. And that's, that's the, in many ways, the easier piece of this. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example of this, if I can. Uh, gastroenterology of Southern Indiana is uh, where you go to get a colonoscopy. It's very exciting, right? Uh, I know most of you right now are sitting around saying, you know, honey, I've been thinking about colonoscopy. Um, 
So they were a client of ours, and we found out two interesting things about them. One was that colonoscopy is to prevent colon cancer, so it's the deadliest cancer, one of the deadliest cancers there is. It's also completely preventable if, if you get a colonoscopy from somebody who knows what they're doing. So what we found was they were the best at what they did, like the Mayo Clinic sent a team to find out how they were getting the results they were getting. So that's one. The other is their docs all had a sense of humor, which I think if you're in that profession, you better have. Um, so they allowed us to put together a campaign and these ads had headlines like, uh, it's not exactly a picnic for us either, or uh, we boldly go where no one has gone before. Um, they, their volume increased to the extent that they had to add staff. And it was because they took this thing that nobody wanted to talk about anyway, and they put a human face to it, and people relaxed a little bit. So if, if you're in a, an environment, first of all, I would, if you come to the conclusion that you can't meaningfully differentiate yourself by what you do or how you do it, I would argue with you about that. I would think there's got to be a way to do that and do it better. Um, but if you just can't come up with that, then think about the way you put your marketing out there. And I will tell you this, it takes nerve to do it. It will be a, a scary thing. If it doesn't make you nervous, it's probably not good enough. It's probably not ready yet. Um, years ago, we did a, a direct mail campaign, a very targeted direct mail campaign for Goodwill stores in Southern Indiana to get donations. And then we did one, uh, to, to in, targeted to people who liked to shop Goodwill um, to find like that favorite designer label of theirs for next to nothing. So one of the mailers that we sent out was uh, an aerial view of this couple sort of snorkeling off the bow of a boat and uh, they're both in little bathing suits and the headline said something like, save enough money on clothes to go somewhere you won't need any. And, um, they got a call from uh, an elderly person who had donated stuff to Goodwill who was really offended by that. And so that was the subject of a meeting. And we said, if, if you don't get that, you're, this, it's not working, right? Uh, you, you, you can't do the kind of marketing you need to do without a couple of people taking offense. And especially in this social media world we live in now, right? Somebody's not going to like it. But... Uh, the people who love you and who will love what you do will love it. So uh, think about that. All right. Well, it sounds like we're at the end of it. I hope this went well. Um, good luck to you. Hang in there. Stay negative. Um, and tune in at 10 o'clock. I know 1SI is going to try and continue to do this. We're just trying to pump as much great information and resources out there as we can. This 1SI Cares initiative is broader. We're going to try and, I know, put people who need employees with people who have employees that are going to need work. There's a lot of pieces of that, so pay attention to that uh, as it's in the news, and we'll talk to you soon.